Hello again, everyone. This is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the NautilusDryDocks.com. I've got a completed project that I want to share with you. Uh, not a very common subject. Uh, that's an art class from the British Navy. Hey, uh, let's take a look. So as you can see behind me, we have uh, a rather large RC submarine. This is completed, uh, fully tested, and had her debut at the recent Subfest Sub Fun Run in Kohada, Georgia last week. And uh, I'm happy to say it did an excellent job performing there. Um, what I want to do with you in this video is uh, show you how it's all put together uh, I'll share a little bit of video of it in operation and uh, let you see how it works, how it was put together. So originally this boat was actually uh, purchased from OTW Designs out of the UK. This is one of the OTW line of kits that the Nautilus Dry Docks is happy to represent. Uh, but this kit was actually purchased by a gentleman by the name of Steve Neal out of California and was put together by him uh, and successfully ran for a little while, but not really uh, to its full potential. He was never really happy with it. And uh, a little while ago, uh, was happy to have taken it off his hands. And I had a chance to kind of tear into it, uh, took some time, did a few tweaks, and uh, I'm happy to say it is now operating exceptionally well and it is a blast to drive. So let's take a closer look at the model itself. Okay, everything is controlled uh, by this VEX six channel radio system that I installed. Um, this is a nice sizable boat. Uh, I'm gonna say, you know, it's probably about 50 some odd inches in length. I'll put the actual specs uh, in the video here down in the bottom of your screen so you can see. Um, when I did the refit, uh, I reworked the rigging. This is actually um, jewelry string and you uh, you get this off of a place like Amazon or at your local hobby shop they're used for making those little plastic bracelets that you put beads on but the cool thing is uh, if you give it a little bit of a stretch um, it maintains perfect tension so you never get droopy rigging uh, and what I did on the front here I put a, a magnetic connector and that just simply snaps together uh, so you don't need to undo little hooks or anything like that. And you need to do that because the hull split is right here. And uh, in order to get the top off, you have to disconnect the rigging. So uh, that's, that's what I ended up doing there. Take a look in the tower and, uh, and Steve's got kind of a rudimentary detailing in there. Certainly, you know, somebody could go nuts super detailing that, but that's all teak wood, all waterproof. Uh, you got the hatch in there and everything. He did a great job. I have not touched the weathering on this. Um, what I did do, however, is I installed LED lights and uh, you can see the starboard light right there. Uh, again, new uh, rigging. I reworked the linkages so we got better throw uh, on the rudders and the dive planes. It's such an interesting profile. You take a look at it from the back there. Uh, it's super slim, so very unique shape with that very bulbous nose. Let's see if I can get into this here with one hand uh, and one screw, one bolt, stainless bolt comes out and uh, you simply lift up on the back and the whole top lifts right off just like that. All right, now you can see the, uh, the inner workings of the boat and it has an OTW 110 millimeter or 4.33 inch diameter watertight cylinder and this is all set up with a uh, remote on off switch so uh, what I can do is just go back over here and you can see the lights come on when I turn the power on and there we go some nice high output LED lights we've got our starboard light uh, stern light and our port side LED light I love wiring that to the main power switch so that you can see when the model is on and off. I'm going to test some of the functions here. We got our forward dive planes. All of the magne uh, ma magnetic linkages uh, are there for easy uh, removal of the cylinder without having to undo any clunky connections. 
Uh, we have our rudder. You can see we've got nice throw on those. And then we've got our stern planes. And those are on an automatic pitch controller. The boat is currently sitting uh, a little bit nose high in the cradle, which is why we've got a little bit of an upward deflection on those stern planes. And then we've got a throttle, obviously. And that's a nice, smooth operation of that as well. This is a, uh, a pressure ballast system. So we've got uh, our gear pump in here that pulls water through a solenoid valve, pumps it into the sealed ballast tank, and that is how everything submerges. Uh, basically, the cylinder drops in place. It's held in place with these uh, elastic bands, and that's it. Uh, it's super simple, very reliable. Um, you can see some holes in the lower hull here, and that matches to some pins in the upper hull, and that maintains a very nice hull alignment as well. If I had one complaint uh, for the boat, it would be that uh, cosmetically, you know, these weights are a little weird. These are big fishing lures, but uh, I mean, certainly they work and you don't see them, but uh, you know, I might have opted for something a little cleaner and cooler looking, but I'm certainly not going to complain uh, very much at all. The only th other thing I'm going to mention about this, the other modification that I did, typically with an OTW cylinder you would have a battery, and uh, in this case it used to be mounted in the bow, like a big sealed lead acid battery. What I did is I put a big 3000 or 3300 milliamp lithium polymer battery in the cylinder itself. So it is completely self-contained, no external uh, connections at all and I repurposed the original battery connections as the uh, LED wiring connection. You can see that right there. So a nice simple reliable uh, and exceptionally good operating control system for this boat. All right let's just take a minute and talk about the performance of the boat in the water. As I mentioned, I had this out in Cahutta, Georgia at the Subfest event, and that was the first time it had the opportunity to stretch its legs in open water. Uh, it is fast. It is a very fast boat. The uh, hull form is actually exceptionally streamlined, particularly because this is really a very early era boat. Uh, I believe it was like late World War I uh, that these R-class boats came out. So it's got a very streamlined shape and it gets up uh, a pretty high rate of speed, which is very, very cool to see. The only thing I really uh, was a little bit disappointed in was the turning performance. And that is just indicative of the design of the boat. It doesn't have anything to do with the construction or implementation of the model. So on the stern, as you can see uh, back here, the, uh, the rudders are close to the center part of the boat. Um, they are underneath the hull and they're a little bit undersized for the size of boat that it is. Now these are actually modified to be even a little bit larger. The real boat had even smaller rudders so uh, you can imagine how that would turn. Of course with real submarines they've got the entire ocean to turn around in so really it's not a big deal but uh, I would say realistically this boat would describe a turning diameter of something in the vicinity of 25 feet or so which is not terrible but uh, is certainly something if it was tightened up it would be a little more fun to uh, drive you could do a number of things uh, you could install bow thrusters there's a ton of room in there to do so you can also put some clear rudder extensions some plastic extensions on the backs of those rudders and that would increase the surface area and get you some additional turning performance. But having said that, all in all, uh, the entire ballast system cycles uh, in about 30 seconds or 40 seconds to go from surface trim to submerged trim and uh, both surface and submerged performance uh, are really quite exceptional. It is a wonderfully handing, uh, handling boat and uh, just a joy to drive, particularly at night, uh, which is what we did the last night of Subfest. We brought it out on the open water with those bright LEDs to track its progress. Well, there you go, everyone. A little bit of an overview of this exceptionally cool uh, and quite rare R-Class submarine kit, uh, originally put out by OTW. 
built by Steve Neal and uh, cleaned up, tweaked, and put in the water by yours truly, Bob Martin, the RC sub guy. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, by all means, please subscribe. I put out videos often, uh, not just for model kit reviews, but uh, hints, tricks, uh, and updates from the dry docks. So thanks again for joining me. Uh, hope to see you again next time.